Welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today or comment or success story you'd like to share, questions about ingredients or formulations or our truth treatment products, which are available at truthtreatments.com. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the Bright Side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. All our websites have news stories and blog posts. You might want to check them on a regular basis. We also have videos up and, of course, all the longevity products. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team right off the websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. If you want to purchase our True Skin Health products, you go to truthtreatments.com, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel for accelerated aging or acne blemishes. If you want to prevent accelerated aging or acne blemishes, great for dark spots. Also, uh, our Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream are available at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, silicon, oil, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Treatment products. Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel. I have a slew of new products coming out as well, cleansers and toners. I've been developing them over the last few months. It takes about six months or so to to uh, finalize a product, and I've been working on them now for four, probably two or three or four months, some of the products. So we should have a bunch of new products, toners and exfoliators and, and cleansers and such coming out. Uh, but you'll hear, we'll definitely be talking about them on this radio program. In the meanwhile, check out truthtreatments.com for our Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, and our Truth Retinol 5% Gel at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right, welcome back to The Bright Side. We've been talking about, uh, well, about the pineal gland, the mysterious, magical pineal gland and its relationship to the sun. And our relationship to the sun with the pineal gland is the mediator. The pineal gland reads the sun and we act accordingly. For 99.9% .9 of the time, light equal uh, of, our, of the time on our, on our earthly incarnation, uh, for 99.9% .9 of the time that we've been alive as human beings on planet Earth, the only light we had was from the sun. And so via evolution, our body was designed to respond to the sun, to the uh, duration of the sun, to the angle of the sun in the sky, to the time of year, basically, via the sun. The pineal gland, pineal gland reads the light, the duration of the light, the intensity of the light, the angle of the light, and this in turn modifies the pineal gland's main secretion, serotonin and melatonin, the two master hormones that control everything else in the body in this way. Light makes us dance. It makes us move. It makes us act. 
Light, we are the puppet, uh, we are the puppet and light is the puppet master. The sun is our puppet master. The sun is our daddy. Interestingly, ancient people thought the sun was God for this reason. So in the morning we wake up, the pineal gland senses the light. And as the sun rises, the melatonin in our brain is converted into serotonin. And serotonin is then our daytime hormone. You can bump, uh, bump up your serotonin levels, if you like, by looking in the sun first thing in the morning for five seconds or so. You'll notice it, actually. If you get up in the morning, don't open your eyes, go right to the window, and look at the, uh, look at the sun, you will notice that you are getting energized. Not in a, not in a jittery caffeine kind of way, but just in an awareness kind of way. You'll find yourself getting ready for the day, basically, as the light hits your eyes. This is a perfect system. It's the way we evolved. Light hits our eyes, the melatonin gets converted into serotonin, we then go about our day. We, we're able to handle our day. You might want to try to eat serotonin containing foods in the morning. That's another interesting strategy. Serotonin is found in fruits. Serotonin is found in fruits and produce. Everything alive makes serotonin, whether it's a vegetable cell or a fungal cell or a bacterial cell or a human cell. Serotonin is an ancient hormone made by all cells, not just people cells. Not just animal cells, but also fruit cells. Pineapples and bananas in particular are very high in serotonin. Eggs, have, uh, uh, eggs can also get you some of the raw material for making serotonin. So slice up some pineapples and slice up some eggs. And tomatoes too, for that matter. Slice up some tomatoes and put them with your eggs. And then have a, maybe half a banana. Walnuts and nuts in general are good sources of serotonin. Serotonin is an action hormone. It's not a happy hormone. You know, we had this, when Prozac came out, this whole idea of a chemical imbalance and your serotonin and serotonin is an antidepressant. And people got this idea that serotonin is some kind of happy antidepressant hormone. It's, that's not really what it is. It's an action hormone, but not in a hyperactive active way like adrenaline. It's like a get ready to do your day hormone. Now, if you put ser if you uh, increase serotonin dramatically, like you get on a serotonin reuptake inhibitor drug, you can go into something called serotonin syndrome. Serotonin syndrome, and that's a whole other story. Serotonin syndrome is when your serotonin levels go really high. It basically only happens if you uh, if you inject serotonin as in a, in a laboratory setting, or if you take too many too much of your Prozac, or if you if you uh, take multiple SSRI drugs. Sometimes this can happen. The symptoms of serotonin syndrome are very unpleasant symptoms that are equivalent to the fear response. Remember, serotonin helps us handle the daytime, but too much serotonin makes us hyper aware, hyper vigilant. And this is, can show up as fear. It can show up as activation of the sympathetic nervous system. Serotonin syndrome symptoms include things like anxiety and agitation and high blood pressure, rapid pulse, rapid heart rate cramping, um, loss of muscle control, sh tremor, shaking, shivering, sweating. It's not a pleasant experience. Serotonin syndrome is pretty darn miserable, actually. In fact, many of the symptoms of serotonin syndrome are, are uh, similar to the symptoms of trying to wean yourself off of opiates. And there's a relationship there. If you ever try to wean yourself off of opiates, if you're... You know, seriously addicted to opiates, like heroin, basically, or, or, you know, serious pain pill addiction, you know that when you try to wean off of it, all of, you have all these symptoms, diarrhea, cramping, anxiety, shivering, shaking. Th these are the classic manifestations of excess serotonin, and they're related. When you try to wean yourself off of your, uh, off of your adrenaline, off of your uh, opiate, I'm sorry, you get a surge of adrenaline-like symptoms. In fact, interestingly, this is a really interesting point. The symptoms of serotonin syndrome are exaggerated when you're going through massive increases in serotonin. They're like big time loss of muscle control, big time cramping and big time nerve, uh, anxiety and nervousness. But it can happen on a kind of continuum. It can, uh, in a way, what we call disease and what we call uh, illnesses, the symptoms of disease, the symptoms of illnesses, they're like an exaggerated version of s serotonin syndrome, of excess amounts of serotonin, but we all can have like minor versions of it. We can all, ha it happens on a continuum. You don't have to have full-blown serotonin syndrome. You may just have elevated blood pressure. 
You may just have some blood clotting. You may just have some, some stomach problems or intestinal problems. We'll finish up when we come back from Find our break. I you know. Okay, we are back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thank you for joining us on the Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. You can purchase longevity products and sign up to join the Brightside Ben team. Off our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Archive page also at benfuchsarchives.com and benfuchsarchive.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, your longevity business, anything we're speaking about here today, we're talking about serotonin, very interesting and misunderstood hormone. People think it's a happy hormone. It's not a happy hormone. It's an adaptive hormone. Too much serotonin causes us to adapt too much. Muscle, uh, 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 we just go out of control, actually, what happens when we... When we have too much serotonin, the adaptive response becomes dysfunctional. Instead of the body trying to get rid of something through the bowels, like a poison, you'll get diarrhea. Instead of the body having energy to run, you'll have muscle shaking and muscle tremors. Instead of uh, the body uh, uh, being able to cool down appropriately, you'll have excessive amounts of sweating or perhaps shivering. Serotonin syndrome is an exaggerated version of what happens to us when we have a symptom that we typically will go to the doctor for. We may not have rapid heart rate and rapid pulse, but we may have high blood pressure and we'll think that we need to be treated for our high blood pressure. We may uh, have some cramping or dysfunction, uh, irritable bowel syndrome type symptoms, and it could be the, rela- the result of just a little bit too much adap- ad- adaption, adaptation. Disease is kind of like an over-adaptive, or maybe it's just a, a, a symptom of the body trying to adapt. What we call illness is really the body just trying to adapt. Illnesses involve the body trying to adjust itself to the environment it has been put into. Disease, what we call disease, is simply the result of the body responding to a condition. It's how the body is handling or how the body is responding to a situation that it is in. So, so important. When we understand this, we'll see how idiotic it is, this this pharmacomedical model of treating diseases. It's just dumb when you understand biochemistry. When you understand biochemistry, it becomes dumb. Because to compel the body to do something it doesn't want to do, it... It just flies in the face of logic. This, once you understand this incredible, intelligent, adaptive system that we have, the biological system the, that manifests itself as the human body is, we'll see how crazy it is to try to force it to do things by poisoning it or electrocuting it or radiating it or cutting things out of it. Disease is the body adjusting, the symptoms of disease. There's no such thing as disease. They're symptoms. Diseases are names that doctors give symptoms. Let's get this idea of diseases out of our head. If, uh, if I want to be remembered for anything on the bright side, it's this idea that diseases don't matter. Diagnosis don't matter. I, I feel like saying it a hundred times because it's so fundamental. Your diagnosis doesn't matter from the position or from the perspective of re- reversal. It's just a way of classifying you. I know I say it a lot, but it's just so important to understand because we still think we have... A, a disease. We have hydrogenitis superintiva. We have diabetes. We have cancer. We have irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. It's like we own it. It's like in our hands. We have it. It becomes nominalized. It becomes a name. It becomes something that, that now you have to go have removed. But when we understand that disease is just part, what we call disease, is a verb. It's the body adapting. The body is diabetesing. It's irritable bowel syndrome-ing. It's uh, uh, psoriasis-ing. It's a process of adaptation. It's how the body is responding to the environment it's put into. Now, what do I mean by that? The biochemical environment, the external environment, the food environment, the oxygen environment. Change the environment, and you will change the response. If you don't like the body's response, 
the intelligent way to address the situation is to change the environment, not to force the body or compel the body to do what you want it to do. Hello, doctor. Hello, pharmacist. This is idiotic. The body is not sick. It's adjusting. It's responding to the environment that it's been put into, mostly food. Mostly it's food that, uh, and drugs, and mostly it's things that are ingested that have an effect on the environment. Now, certainly your thoughts have an effect on the environment of the body. Your feelings have an effect on the body, and the, on the environment of the body. Your sp sense of spirituality have an effect on the bodily environment. That's why I would say there's multi-dimensions here, spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. But from a physical perspective, if you have if you have supposedly a disease, you don't have a disease, you have the signs of a body that is adjusting. If it's high blood pressure, the body is adjusting to sugar. It could be among other things. One of the things it could be adjusting to is sugar levels. If it's high blood pressure, another thing the body could be adjusting to is blood oxygen levels. If you have high blood pressure, another thing the body could be adjusting to is fear chemical levels or stress chemical levels like serotonin. Serotonin toxicity, by the way, occurs on a, a continuum. They call it a spectrum. It's called the spectrum theory of serotonin toxicity. A little bit of excess serotonin, a little bit of an excessive adjustment to the environment causes a little problem and a larger Excess causes a larger problem in super high levels, which for the most part only occur when you take too much serotonin drugs, too much Prozac, or uh, multiple serotonin drugs. That will cause really big problems. But on a less intense level, just high blood pressure, blood clotting, loose stools, they can just be a sign of excessive serotonin secretion, a sign that you're being hypervigilant to the environment, that you're hypersensitive to the environment. Under ordinary conditions, when the environment changes, we shouldn't have a dramatic response. If we have a dramatic response, we're exhibiting a hypersensitivity. This usually occurs when, when the system is out of con being bombarded, bombarded with wrong thoughts, bombarded with wrong feelings, bombarded with sugar, bombarded with toxicity from foods, bombarded with drugs. Eventually, it becomes super sensitive, and it, instead of adjusting smoothly, it adjusts dramatically. And that's where you get your symptomology. What we call illness, what we call symptoms, in many, case, in many cases are the manifestation of excessive amounts of uh, excessive levels of serotonin and also sp adrenaline and also cortisol from too much stress, too much vigilance, too much uh, uh, hyper awareness of the environment, a, an inelegant way of managing life. If we are exhibiting symptomology, our biochemistry is not managing life in a smooth and graceful fashion. That usually comes from being bombarded over and over and over again. What we go to doctors for, what we get drugged for, what we get surgical procedures for, and I'm talking endometriosis, and I'm talking psoriasis, and I'm talking gallstones, and I'm talking diabetes, I'm talking everything we go to doctors for, are the symptoms and the signs of life management that is either out of control or is just has been bombarded with stimuli from bad living. Disease is dis-ease, a body out of ease. It's like fear, it's sympathetic. All the signs of, uh, of serotonin syndrome are sympathetic in nature, sympathetic overdrive. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number, we'll return right after this. On the bright side, thank you for joining us. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time. And you can search Bright Side episodes and um, check out our archive page at Ben Fuchs Archive and BenFuchsArchives.com as well as BrightSideBen.com. We've got search engine up. So you can search for particular programs you may have missed or if you'd like to review a program. Our number today, and we have lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about anything we're speaking about here today, we'll get your calls here in just a moment. A couple of news stories I'd like to get to. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. This is from uh, the New York Times headline. Want a better workout? Just breathe. No kidding. Where have you heard that before? We talk about this all 
the time. This is so fundamental. I love simple ideas that allow us to leverage and exploit and take advantage of the body's desire to be healthy that we can use and, and take advantage of from the, the comfort of our own living room. There's so many ways we can stay healthy from the comfort of our own living room. That should be our New Year's resolution, that we're going to do everything we can do to stay healthy, to keep ourselves healthy, or to re restore our body back to its state of ease from dis-ease, from the state of dis-ease that uh, uh, so many millions of Americans are dealing with, back to a state of ease from the comfort of our own kitchens, living rooms, bathrooms, bedrooms, bathtubs, showers, just, we can do this ourselves. That is so important for us to understand if we're dealing with health challenges, folks. We can do this ourselves. With rare exceptions, is the doctor necessary? I'm sorry to my medical friends and, and pharmacists, for that matter. With rare exceptions. Do you have a need for uh, uh, emergency procedures? Yes. Are there needs for, for drugs sometimes? Yes, rarely, but there are. For the most part, Health is about what we do from the comfort of our own homes. Good health is not a medical issue. Medicine interferes with health. It doesn't promote it. And this idea that we, we go to the doctor to get better is a meme, a mind virus, a belief system, a dogma, a doctrine that doesn't serve us. It serves them. It's not fair. It's mean-spirited. And while I, the individual proponent, the individual pharmacist, the individual doctor may not be complicit. The model is. The, the pharmacomedical model that says that we can't do it ourselves, that we need to go outside ourselves, which by the way is part and partial with the government system and legal system and political system that says that human beings and individuals are too weak to take care of their own business, that they're too weak to take care of their own lives. It's part of the same picture, just the pharmacomedical version of it that says that we as human beings cannot handle our own business, we need to go to the doctor. That we're too dumb, or we're too unskilled, or that the body's just out of control. That's where the whole genetic idea comes from. It's just your genetics, nothing you could do about it. If I had a nickel for every time somebody told me, well, I have high blood pressure because my mother had high blood pressure. Or I have, I, uh, my grandmother has dementia, I don't want to get dementia like my grandmother because she has it, so I have, might have it too. If anybody ever says that, you know immediately that they don't understand how genetics works, or biochemistry for that matter. Now, if it's, a, if it's a lay person, that's one thing, but if it's a healthcare professional who says that, that's not right. Doc Wallach was vilified, crucified for talking about epigenetics 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Well, guess what? We learned about it in pharmacy school 40 years ago. They didn't quite link the fact that uh, the genetic theory didn't really hold much water if you believed in epigenetics, but they did still tell us about epigenetics. We learned about it in pharmacy school. Oxygenation activates your genes. Lack of oxygen also activates your genes, for better or worse. Everything activates your genes. Every thought you think activates your genes. Every, every feeling you feel activates your genes. It's all genetic, obviously, but that's not the control point. Everything works with genetics, but that's not where the control point is. Genetics are just the blueprint. We control the blueprint. We write the blueprint. The blueprint writes itself with every thought we think, with every feeling we feel, with every food we eat, with every, every time you eat something, your genetics change. Every time you take a supplement, your genetics change. Genetics, if you could see them, if you could see genetics with the right kind of detector, you would see them blinking on your genes, blinking on and off like Christmas tree lights. They're constantly in flux. They're constantly changing. And guess what? When you take essential fatty acids, your genetics change, your genetics change to give you a better skin. When you take zinc, your genetics change to give you a better, a better immune system. When you take chromium, your, your genetics change to give you a better sugar handling ability. Yes, your genetics change, but the control point is the supplements. Or, from a negative point of view, the control point is the drugs they want to give you. In fact, I was just reading another article here I was going to tell you about. Where the heck did I put it? I don't even know where I put it, but it was about... Uh, here it is. This is from, uh, this is from trans Science Translational Medicine. Virus could treat brain tumors by boosting the immune system. They want to give you a virus to boost your immune system to fight cancer, to treat cancer. How does this work? Well, what is a virus? A virus is genetics. A virus is a gene or a bunch of genes. A few, not a lot, 100 genes or so. 
It's a, it's a little gene packet. It's a little string of genes. That's what a virus is, a little string of genes. Not a lot of genes, just a little piece of genes. It's covered with something called a capsule. So you got a capsule in genes. That's what a virus is. And only God knows how the heck this thing, OGK, only God knows how this thing operates. Somehow or another, you got floating genes, little genes that float around in the environment. When I say floating, I mean not in the body, floating in the air. You got floating genes in the air. That's what happens when you catch a virus. You catch some genes. But these floating genes are so unbelievably amazing, OGK, that they can insert themselves into our genes, into our DNA. This is just so mind-blowing when you think about it. You've got a little floating genetic packet called a virus. That's what a virus is, a little floating piece of information. It ins it, it, when you breathe it in, it goes into your blood, it goes into your body, it goes into the cells, it goes into the DNA, the nucleus, into the DNA. It inserts itself into your genes, and then it makes you make it. It forces your cells, it forces our cells to make more copies of it until the cell explodes, filled with these viruses, and then the viruses do the same thing with the rest of the cells. So viruses work. Well, now what they want to do is they want to use this ability to fight cancer. Why? They'll take, the, this is the plan anyway, this is so crazy, they'll take genes and they'll stick it into a virus and they'll stick it into your body and these genes will code for boosting your immune system, for stimulating your immu immune system. So they'll use the, 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 the DNA hijacking properties of a virus for good. They will, they'll, uh, uh, you know, classic Dr. Strange Glove kind of idea, only God knows, OGK, what we're going to be creating. Instead of just figuring out why is the body adjusting, what we try to do is we try to force the adjustment or change the adjustment. We try to make our own adjustment. It's crazy, folks. And that's why we have more doctors per capita than any other culture on the history of the planet. And simultaneously, we are the sickest culture on the history of the planet. That's all you need to know about the failure of the pharmacomedical model. Failure, F, no, F minus. All right, eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. I'm pharmacist Ben. Let's go to Elizabeth in California. What's oh? There's the music, Elizabeth. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. You there? Hey, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, how do you live? E Elizabeth. Elizabeth, yeah. hang tight because we have to take a break, and uh, we'll get your call when we come back. Thanks for holding. I know you've been holding on a while, so hang on, and we'll get you when we come back. I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. We'll be back on the bright side right after this. Side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Elizabeth in California. Good morning, Elizabeth. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am well, thanks. How can we help you? Um, I've been using Dr. Wallach's food packages um, for my kidney issue, and I don't really seem to have any great Resp results, response. No, I've been yeah. using um, the Cardio Mix, Cherry Cardio Mix. Okay, Cardio, and, Mint, uh, cardio FX, the uh, Cardio Pack, or the Cardio FX yeah, capsules. Yeah, and okay. then the Tang Tangerine. I can't, I can't stand. Okay, I'm gonna love talking to you. I love it because you're like, you're like bringing up all the objections people have when they start a supplement or when they start the longevity supplement. Sometimes the taste of the BTT, <laughs> they don't get good results. You're not know. So let me let's address both of those. Those are both two very important issues. Okay, first of all, uh, tangy tangerine. If you don't like the taste of it, do smaller doses. On the directions, it says do a full scoop, or sometimes it says two scoops. If you weigh in, it, it, it goes by body weight, a scoop per hundred pounds, or something like that. You don't need to do that much if you can't handle the taste. It's better that you do a small amount than you don't do any at all. Do you follow me? And it tastes much better when you do small, I think, anyway. My, my particular preference is to do a small I've been amount. Mi mixing it with pineapple. Well, if you do too much, it's overwhelming. The, the flavor's overwhelming. It's too much to take, the flavor. And also, it can give you a little uh, digestive problems if you do too much. So I like to tell people to do smaller amounts. I know it's not on the directions that way, and, you know, it shows you the amount of pull I have with longevity, but still. Do smaller amounts because it's better that you get some of it. The nutritional value of the BTT, in my opinion, as a pharmacist and as a nutritionist, is so important and so unbelievably helpful 
that it's tragic not to use it because you don't like the taste. Because even just a teaspoon in a glass of water will give you a benefit. You follow me? Yes. Okay, yes. so find a place where you like the taste of it. That's my, my recommendation on the BTT. But the second question you brought up is much more important, much more significant. And that is, and I hear this a lot, I started a supplement program or I started the longevity program, I don't notice a difference. Because your problem is not only about supplements. Supplements, supplement. If you look in the dictionary under the word supplement, you will see add to. It's like when you supplement your income, right? It's not like that's the only income you have. It adds to your income. Are you with me? So you have to okay. use the supplements as supplements to add to changes in your life. You, if you were listening at the beginning of the program, you heard me talk about disease as the manifestation of how you're living your life. Now, I don't, I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm, I'm saying this for emphasis. I'm not saying it to be mean or attacking or hostile. You, you're with me, Elizabeth? I'm being. So you want me to change my, my food regimen? All of, I, lots of it, but that's the most important aspect of our life. From a biochemical perspective, the most important aspect of our life, the most important control point of our biochemistry, the most important leverage point of our biochemistry is food. So yes, food is the key. Now, but then there's the, the supplements. You're going to continue those. I'll tell you. I'll give you the specifics, the action steps in a minute. But I want you to get the idea here. Yes, food is the key, but also oxygen is important. Breathing is important. Relaxation is important. Making sure you're uh, using mental and emotional strategies are important. It's multidimensional and supplements supplement the dimensions. So kidney disease involves the sugar system. All right? Blood sugar issues and kidney issues go hand in hand. So the stainless supplements are going to be they're great for you. But you got to get the sugar under control. Now, and I don't mean necessarily like you're eating candy bars all day, but your body's not handling sugar correctly. Are you with me, Elizabeth? It doesn't mean yeah. you could be like, I don't eat candy bars. I hate candy bars. It's not about eating candy bars. It's about how your body's handling sugar. Input of sugar comes in from bread, from pasta, from rice, from potatoes, from uh, all kinds of starchy processed foods, power bars, cereals. I mean, most of the foods we eat are foods that throw off our blood sugar. It doesn't have to be candy bars. It could be bread. It could be rice. So getting the blood sugar under control is important. That's the most important thing you can do for kidney control. The second thing you want to do because of the relationship between blood sugar and, and, uh, and the digestive system is you've got to work on digestive health as well. The nightly essence, the ultimate enzymes, do a food diary and eliminate problem foods. You might want to try a swear cleanse. If you listen to this program for more than a week, it's the same things I tell everybody and that I will continue to tell everybody because it's all the same stuff. So work on the digestive system and the blood sugar system. Calm the body down. Continue your supplement program. Get on the BTT. The less you eat, the better off you're going to be. Eating is just a confusing mess for the body, and the less we do it, the better off we are, especially as we get older. You know, after the age of, say, 60... Food becomes an indulgence. Yeah, you need food. I'm not saying you don't need to have some calories, but you don't need a lot of it. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. So these are all things that you have to do. But here's the good news, Elizabeth. It's the healing pro And for everybody out there dealing with the health challenge, this is the good news. The healing process is automatic. You don't have to do anything. Uh, once you, you don't have to do anything for the healing to occur. Once you address the food, the input, the stuff that's coming in, and eliminate the bad stuff that's coming in. Address the stuff that's coming in, the good stuff in and the bad stuff not in. The bad stuff out, the good stuff in. I mean, I, I don't want to be simplistic and childish here, but that's really what it is. The good stuff in, the bad stuff out. The good stuff is the supplements and foods that you can handle that are nutritionally dense and don't have a lot of calories but have a lot of nutritional value, and the bad stuff out, especially sugar, as well as digestive toxicity, as well as mental and emotional toxicity. It's not that hard. And the good news is, is your body can do it. That's why it's not that hard. It's because your body can do it. If you're not noticing results, you guarantee there's, there, there's some of these places that you need to be working. And if I'm you, Elizabeth, I'm working on the sugar aspect first. Does that help? That helps. Yeah, as far as digestive, I did take a major test. On Forget tests. You're, body. Elizabeth. You're like a poster child for all the things I like to talk about here. I'm glad you're bringing all this subject up. Don't take a test. You're the test. 
You don't have to take a test. You don't have to go anywhere outside of your house to do a test. Do it in your kitchen. Yeah. Eat a food, see how you feel. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, it was on nutrition, and I found out that my body wasn't taking in certain enzymes. Well, that, that, I, you missed, that doesn't quite make sense. That's not really accurate. But I, I know what you're saying. You did a test and you found certain things out. Don't worry about it. Go home or, or go to your kitchen and eat a bunch of eggs today. All right? Go, or, or take a couple days off from food. It's always good to clear the decks to kind of hit the reset button by taking a day or two off from food. But then eat a bunch of eggs or eat a bunch of cheese. Or find your favorite food. What's your favorite go-to food, your absolute favorite food that you're un you have to have if you're under stress or you're starving or you're, you can't resist? And don't think about it quickly. What is it? I like mashed potatoes. There you go. Bingo. Bingo. Eat a bunch of mashed potatoes. How do you like that? Take, take two days off. Make yourself the biggest pot of mashed potatoes you ever made in your life. Eat as much as you want. Watch what happens. Go extreme on it. And watch what happens. And I want you to call me back the next day and tell me how you felt. And I guarantee you're going to t tell me you felt like crap. Guarantee. 100% guarantee you're going to tell me you felt like crap. I I'm not kidding you. That's how powerful this information is. And you now have a major source of your problems that you've identified. What you do with that information, by the way, that's up to you. <laughs> But you'll have that information at your disposal. And it, won't, it wouldn't have cost you a penny. You wouldn't have to go to any doctor, had any diagnostics, had anybody fill an insurance form and have somebody read your reference ranges. Oh, you're a little low on this. You're a little high on that. Oh, our little test says that you have a, an allergic reaction to this and you're intolerant to that. And, you know, now that'll be $300, please. Nonsense. In the kitchen, take two days off from food, go eat a pot of mashed potatoes. Call me back. Uh, you think I'm kidding you? I'm not. Hey, I want to get one more call in. Thanks, Elizabeth. I, I hope I helped you out. God bless. That. Hey, what's that? For, for indulging over certain foods. And I'm well, aware of that. Then you know. Those then you already know. You don't want to, you do, you don't want to know. <laughs> That's the problem. You know, but you don't want to know. You know what I mean? Because it means changing our life. I, I'm, I'm playing with you a little bit here. I'm not being mean. Are you with me? Yeah. Um, okay, so identify the foods, eliminate the foods. You'll find that the foods you like are the foods that bump your blood sugar up because you're probably chronically hypoglycemic because your insulin is so jacked up from eating so much sugar. It's this vicious downward spiral, the high blood sugar, low blood sugar roller coaster that tumbles out of control that we all have. You're not alone. You're in good company here, Elizabeth. You know, we all have it. Hey, that's the music. I, I hope I helped you out, Elizabeth, and I'm sorry if I left you guys on hold. God bless you. Have a beautiful day. And I uh, apologize if I left you on hold. Got to call in early, you guys, because we get lots of calls here on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Please check out my websites, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, and pharmacistben.com for all the longevity products. If you want to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team, call 866-735-2470. And also check out our Truth Treatment products, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream at truthtreatments.com. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to y'all later, folks. Bye for now.